Jesus Christ is risen today, number 589. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, we enter into the third week of Easter, where we continue to rejoice during this Easter season in our Lord's triumphant rising from the dead, and showing himself to his friends, his brothers, his priests, and he continues to give himself to us in the Eucharist and continues to save us from sin, forgive our sins. So let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in my life. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you the author of life you put to death. But God raised him from the dead, as this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that with his Christ would suffer. Repent therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. like to uh, welcome anybody here who is from out of town or visiting or coming back. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, first of all, it's a great blessing and uh, Easter joy to welcome the Mattern family here in the front row over on the St. Joseph side. And there's a uh, young lady, a communicant. She's going to be the first uh, receiving her first Holy Communion, Hope Mattern. And uh, so at communion time, we will I'll communicate myself and the deacon and the servers and the extraordinary ministers. And so she, for the first time, will receive Jesus. So she'll come up uh, in a special reception. And Bev Duell has uh, generously agreed to uh, take some pictures for the family. So it's wonderful to have you here. I have known Rachel and Brian for years, uh, over 10 years. And it's great to have them there. Usually, I mean, different parishes do First Communions at different times. The cathedral's doing theirs today. And Rachel had contacted me and asked if I could uh, give my goddaughter uh, First Communion. And she's great. And uh, she's really smart. And I said, how are you going to receive? On the tongue or on the hand? She said, on the hand. I go, well, how do you do it? She did perfect. So you can maybe teach some of us like how to receive communion. So that's good. So we're real proud of you. And we're part of the universal church. Not only, more importantly, God is proud of you. And heaven celebrates because God loves us so much that he wants to become part of our very body, blood, soul, and humanity. And so he loves us so much, he gives himself to us in, the, in communion, in the Eucharist, every day at Mass, especially on Sundays, the day of our Lord's resurrection during Easter. And so we just uh, thank you for your faithfulness. Uh, she's, a, she's a very strong, smart young woman. The apples don't fall far from the tree, and her family's here, her father, Brian, and, and her brother, brothers and sister are here. Uh, also, next week, I'll be... Um, going on Thursday. I'll still do the Mass at the Vets' Home. 
but then I'll be going to do a wedding down in Coronado for a friend of mine's son who's a Navy SEAL, a newly christened Navy SEAL, and his, uh, and his soon-to-be wife. And then I'm going to take a few days off, doctor's orders. So Father Poole will be here next week. He'll be celebrating Mass, hearing confessions. Now, I don't know whether he'll be celebrating the Friday Mass. I'll have to call him. So you'll just have to sign up for Evangelists or my parish app to be able to, uh, and if you signed up, if you were on flock note, it we automatically exported your names. So just stay tuned, um, and we'll let you know if there will be mass on Friday, but it may or may not happen. So also, um, at the end of mass, after we do the prayer of St. Michael, what I'm gonna do is read to you a letter from Bishop about, and it's being read all through the diocese at every parish after masses, it's about like the DNL and everything that transpired in the last several years. And we had a diocesan and loan, you know, a deposit and loan or whatever that is, uh, some money that we lost during the bankruptcy. So the bishop, uh, the diocese is going to pay us back incrementally, but we received the first remuneration checks this week. So I'll go into a little deeper detail after we say the prayer of St. Michael in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There's a, actually a very good movie uh, out, well, it's been out for years, probably two decades, and it's called Signs. And uh, M. Night Shyamalan is a great writer, director. Uh, he's kind of a legend in, in, in the film industry. He writes movies that have these twists at the end which you can never guess. And it was called Signs. Now, it's a little scary, so parents should watch it first. But, you know, signs, you know those signs in the wheat fields that people make often? Uh, or they think it was made from a UFO. Well, anyways, this movie is quite remarkable. And uh, M. Night Shyamalan has a lot of Catholic sensibilities to him in the sixth sense. You know, the little child is playing in the pews and he says, Clamawe uh, ad te domine de profundis. Out of the depths I cry to you, O God. And it is actually filmed in a Catholic church, at least the sixth sense, parts of it were. But this movie revolves around a former Anglican priest played by Mel Gibson. And some strange things are happening in the world and around his house. And so there are all these things that don't seem to make sense. There's his brother who's infatuated with baseball and he's a very good baseball player and he has hanging up on the wall the baseball where he, I think he hit a grand slam. And then they have the daughter, little daughter, who likes to drink water and she leaves the water all around the house. And there, Mel Gibson's son, uh, he's an asthmatic and struggles with, uh, she and him, right before she died, she got into uh, in a bad accident. She was able to talk to him moments before she died and she actually says something to him that doesn't seem to make sense but it's very interesting as you watch these movies that he writes, at the end of the movie within the last 10 minutes or five minutes, everything falls into place. And so it's like Saint Peter in the first reading talks about the fulfillment of everything written in the Old Testament. Now there's a lot written in the Old Testament. And so Saint Augustine says that the Old, New Testament is hidden in the Old and the Old Testament is fully illumined or fully revealed in Christ Jesus in the New Testament. And so everything in the New Old Testament points to Jesus. Like, for example, there are things in theology called typology. It's basically previews of Jesus. Isaac carrying the wood of the altar on the hill of Mount Sinai in order so that Abraham can give up his only first, first son. And uh, the angel stays Abraham's hand. And so, but Isaac is a type of Christ, because even though if Abraham would have sacrificed his only begotten son, it wouldn't have saved us from sin. And so like Jonah, when he's in the whale for three days and three nights, he's expelled from the belly of the whale. That is a typology, that's a prophecy. It is a preview of Jesus being in the Holy Sepulcher for three days and then rising from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we have all these things, especially as we read in Advent, the prophet of Isaiah, or Ezekiel, and also very much in during Lent, we read the prophecies of the suffering servant. 
And so oftentimes in the Old Testament, we hear these extraordinarily clear and concise and specific prophecies of Jesus, even with the Blessed Mother. And the virgin shall be with child, and his name will be Emmanuel. So all this is happening to the disciples and to the chosen people in real time. They don't really, we're beneficiaries of seeing everything in hindsight, as a matter of fact. We can look at things in retrospect, but for these poor folks who were living at the time, the chosen people, and they lived day by day and moment by moment, and a lot of their time must have seemed mundane. But everything was played out with Christ Jesus. He says, and he prophesies, and they don't understand it when he says, you know, the Son of Man must suffer and die at the hands of the elder and then rise again on the third day. Even through the Gospels, it says they didn't understand it. Peter even objects to this fact after he had been given the title Prince of the Apostles. You are Peter and upon this rock. And so, and you look at Peter and the Acts of the Apostles in the first reading, he's a changed man. He is a new man. He's not another Peter, but he has grown as we are called to grow in faith, and there's no better place to do it than now by receiving God in word and in sacrament. And so Peter's a new man. He's bold. He is courageous, fearless, and he is very stubborn in his adherence to Jesus Christ and the faith of Christ Jesus. And so he even gives himself on the cross upside down because he didn't think he was worthy to be crucified in the same way as our Lord. So we are a work in progress as St. Peter is a work in progress. And Jesus himself opens their minds on the road to Emmaus, which the disciples are mentioned today, how they was made known in the breaking of the bread. And Jesus opened their mind on the way to Emmaus, and they said their hearts were burning because it finally the penny drops. Everything comes together, like in this movie, signs. Everything comes together with Christ Jesus after the resurrection when they're finally able to look back and say, oh, I see, this makes sense, and this makes sense. So all these things that converge, like in the movie, signs at the very end, everything makes sense. And so Jesus helps his disciples and us to recognize he's a fulfillment of all things we hope for. He throws open the w wide the gates of heaven. Now, Acts of the Apostles was written after, um, after Pentecost, which we look forward to celebrating and in, in, a, in, a, in, in a few dozen days. And so it's important for us to recognize that there are little moments in our lives that seem, don't seem to make sense or seem just off the wall. So like in the movie, like in celebrated her Mass at 1215 on Wednesday. So both of them, you know, were born into eternal life. We celebrated their funerals during the Easter season. So with them, like the disciples, like the individuals in the movie, and like the viewers of the movie, they see all the mysteries of their lives. What, why did this happen? Why did that happen? So we might ask ourselves, I know that you, a lot of you go through great suffering, chronic suffering, have seen tragedy, experience things that you don't understand, that maybe anger you, that maybe frustrate you macroscopically about the world. Uh, so it's best for us to take care of our own little corner of the vineyard. Do we make mistakes? Of course. But we always have recourse to confession, to the forgiveness of sins. St. Peter said, look, a lot of you were involved in putting Christ to death and rejecting him. Some of them to whom he was speaking probably hit Jesus or spat in his face or jeered him or publicly humiliated him. But Peter, does he say there's no hope for you? No. He says, repent and be baptized, and there were thousands who were baptized that day. So for all of us, we are full of hope because of Christ Jesus, and he conquers every form of sin and death and suffering because he's gone through every form of suffering. So it's well for us to take a step back and to just say, as the Divine Mercy image says, Jesus, I trust in you. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I don't know how this is all going to play out, you know, when things seem to be spiraling out of control or out of your control, or things aren't going as you planned, or the prayer isn't being answered to your uh, pleasure, or the time frame in which you wanted the prayer. 
to be answered, but God is in control. He has dominion. He is the Lord, Dominus. He has dominion. And so it's, uh, in the, during this Easter season, it's a time to rejoice and have peace in the fact that despite everything, Jesus will conquer all. And as the funeral mass says, in the end, he will destroy even death itself. And so it's going to be a time when we wait, when pray God, all of us will be together. And when we uh, pray that all of us will be at the wedding feast of the Lamb, but the wedding feast, the Eucharistic reign of Jesus has already begun uh, as we have a first communicant receiving the most beautiful sacrament and the most beautiful gift we could ever hope for, which is Christ himself. And so he thirsts for us. He wants us to turn to him. And it's up to us to humbly acknowledge that we need Jesus more than ever, but more than ever, he loves us and gives himself to us, gives himself to us in the sacraments. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, Father, maker of heaven and earth, of all things to the Lord. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things to be and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the conscious side. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus is made known in the breaking of the bread. Our minds and hearts are opened as we pray. For Pope Francis, Bishop Austin Anthony, and all clergy, that they may receive constant strength and wisdom through your spirit to guide all people to your Son, the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church be a vigilant guard of the sanctity of the Eucharist, ever mindful of the real presence of Christ. We pray to the Lord. For the victims of war, especially the innocents of the Ukrainian and Israeli Hamas conflicts, and that the nations end the use of violence and aggression, replacing them with peaceful resolutions to their differences. We pray to the Lord. For those who serve our country, both here at home and throughout the world, and for their loved ones who pray for their safe return home, and for all who plant and tend crops that nourish and sustain us. We pray to the Lord. Lord that those in a prison of isolation be welcomed and comforted by the hospitality of a loving community. And for all of our parishioners residing in our local nursing homes and care centers, that they may receive comfort, prayers, and companionship from our St. Richard's and St. Charles's families. We pray to the Lord. That all who have given themselves to a life of service for us may know our gratitude and benefit from our support and prayers. And that all, who, all those who have died, including Paul Murphy and Evelyn Pacheco, may be witness to Christ's, Christ's resurrection 
and eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for an increase of vocations in our Diocese of Helena, especially to the priesthood, the diaconate, and the holy orders of con and consecrated um, religious life. And for all the unspoken prayers of this, your St. Richard's and St. Charles families and our visitors, and for all names entered in our book of intentions, we pray to the Lord. For our first communicant, Hope Ann, that she may live a long, holy, healthy, and happy life, and that the Easter joy of the risen Christ may be poured into her heart and the hearts of her family, relatives, and friends. And for all first communicants who will be receiving their first communion at St. Richard and St. Charles in May, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father of all truth, hear the prayers of your people and strengthen your holy church to answer your call. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. And give us the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And it, is right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, O Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Austin Anthony, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, Helen, Helena, Richard, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, to make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time, on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne at the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, Paul and Evelyn, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucia, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer. On your stand.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Simple response to each prayer is amen. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an etern eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain upon you forever. Our mass is ended. Let us hold in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Pray for us. Please be seated. <clears throat> Dear good people of St. Richard Parish, Columbia Falls, greetings to you from your bishop. <clears throat> I am very pleased to announce <clears throat> that the Deposit and Loan Restoration Trust that was set up as part of the bankruptcy plan will be making an initial distribution of 3% to those entities who held deposits in the Deposit and Loan Fund at the Diocese at the time of bankruptcy in 2014. When I am visiting the parishes, the question of the diocese bankruptcy often comes up. The ensuing discussion often revolves around when the various diocesan entities will begin to see financial recovery from the Deposit and Loan Restoration Trust. This is a clear indicator that in the long term, the entities who lost funds in the bankruptcy will see them repaid. The DNL Cemetery, Columbia Falls Fund for your parish. St. Richard Parish, Columbia Falls contains <clears throat> $19,292.93. Therefore, the first payout that was received this week is $578.79. The DNL Long Term Reserve Fund for your parish, St. Richard, Columbia Falls, contains $37,203.47. Therefore, the first payout that was received was $1,116.10. The total amount you have received at this time is $1,694.89. As a reminder, the Deposit and Loan Restoration Trust was established by the Bankruptcy Court in an effort to provide financial relief for diocesan entities who collectively held $12,024,963 in the deposits at the time of the Chapter 11 reorganization was filed. These deposits became liabilities of the trust. The assets of the trust include the loans payable to the former deposit and loan fund valued at $4,257,657.69. $1,067, and the development rights on approximately 75 acres of cemetery land in Helena. I'm pleased to announce that nearly all our smaller loans have been paid in full, and our larger loans have entered into negotiated 10-year repayment plans. In addition, the trust is a major equity holder in a Hilton Home Two Suites Hotel, which was developed for the long-term benefit of the diocese, diocesan depositors, on five of the 75 acres. The trust continues to look for development opportunities with long-term goal of full repayment. The Deposit and Loan Restoration Trust is independent and separate from the legal structure of the Diocese of Helena. I am neither a trustee nor do I have influence or control 
over the trust. Although I pray for a quick and financial recovery, the assets and liabilities sit outside of the diocese by design of the bankruptcy. When you receive your distribution, your pastor will be discussing the distribution with your financial counsel. It is great to see progress being made. Know of my prayers for you in this Easter season, and please pray for me in Christ. I am most Reverend Austin Anthony Vetter, Bishop of Helena. <laughs>